angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing through the night. And the mountains in reply, echoing their brave light. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why the song of happy cheer? What glad tidings did you bring? What glad brightness did you see? Christmas week, thanking the Lord once again for the child who came and saved us all from sin and hell. We are thankful to be here with you this morning. We offer these words from the book. From the 89th chapter of Isaiah, we read, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased his joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. There will be no end. There will be no end. Father, we come this morning to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy for your loving kindness, for your patience, for your plan of salvation. We stand here in your sanctuary in obedience and we ask, Lord, that you are and be here with us. We thank you for this privilege and opportunity to stand before your people on this platform to give you praise, honor, and worship. We ask your blessings on the sick and the afflicted the homeless and the hungry, the widows and the widowers, the orphans and the bereaved. Our own Reverend Robbins has lost three this week, and so we ask your blessing upon his family. We know, Lord, that you take folks from this life into the next, and I know that all who have come, it was simply their time. Yes, we place the reason on COVID. We place the reason 
on various things, but you and only you decide the time that we have in this life. And we thank you, Lord, for all you do, for your mercy and your kindness, for everything that you've blessed us with, past, present, and into the future. Now, Lord, as we move into this service, continue to bless Brother Donald. Continue to bless Brother Chairman. Continue to bless Brother Gill. And please bless Brother Rufus. This is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Yeah. 
How is it that a child can be born in this mean world and even then there was no place for him to lay his head? Children exist all over the world in famine infested places where they have no homes, no food. Our world was given to us. The Lord said, take dominion over it. And in many instances, we've not done a good job. But we sit on the cusp of a new year. It's an opportunity to do things better, to help those who are in need. 2020 has been tough. But we serve a God who can do all things, everywhere. We thank you for your presence again. We want to offer our thanks to our brother and sister, Georgetta Breedlove and brother Kelvin Alexander for our decorations today. It reminds us that it is the season of love, the season where we all were saved at the right time. This morning, God has chosen a man to use for his own purposes. We ask that you would pray for him right now. Pray that his words are the words of the Lord, that the Lord takes control of his mind and his heart and his very soul, that you might be edified and he might be glorified. As I wipe off this podium so that he might be safe, I ask your blessings upon Reverend Rufus Roberts, our own brother in this ministry, in the name of Jesus. Welcome him as he comes. We got this thing down. We've been doing it for a while now. Amen. All we're trying to do is take care of each other. Come, brother. Yeah. Tell us what the Lord said. Amen. Good morning, each of you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ which is ahead of my life. And I thank you him again for allowing us another privilege and an opportunity to be in the house of worship again. And I pray for those of you who are out there tuning in and listen to us, that you may receive a blessing from hearing God's word. Amen. My name is Dr. Rufus Robin. I've been a long time member of this church. And yes. Sometimes preaching the gospel for about 31 years. And God is not still through with us yet. So you bow your heads with me as I offer a word of prayer. We turn to God, our Father, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, if again you have brought us to this moment in time, we say thank you. Thank you for getting us up early this morning, closing our right mind, giving us a reason to portion of health and strength with the activity of our land. Lord, we just say thank you. It's been another week's journey. It's not been easy, but yet it's still, we thank you for the sufficient of the day. We thank you for meeting all of our needs. We thank you for your son, Christ Jesus, who came and died, that we might have the right to the tree of life. And Lord, we thank you for him, enabling him to sit on your right hand right now, asking you to forgive us for all of our sins, Reconciling us back to you. Yes. So, Lord, we say thank you. thank you. And we ask you right now, just create me, Lord, a clean heart. Yes. And my prayer that you re renew a right spirit within me, that I love you first, keep your word, and I do all we can to love our brothers. So, Lord, we pray today that those who are tuned in today, that might receive a blessing knowing that you are real in our lives. Yes. You're the reason for the season. And we actually remember those who are down and out, those who are stressed out, those who are homeless, and those who are jobless. 
Then, Lord, those who are sleeping in the cold, please remember Evergreen. We have a lot of things going on, Lord, that we have no control of. But we know that you are able and you are compassionate, God. And we ask you to continue to lead and guide us. And we'll give you praise and glory. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I want to read a portion of scripture that will be for our hearing. I think the more I read God's word, the better off you will be. And today he will come from St. Luke, the second chapter. And it reads as follows. When I get to the point I want to get, I'll quit reading. Uh, Luke, the second chapter, we're talking about the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenity was governor of Syria. And all went out to be taxed, everyone unto his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child, and so it was, so it was that while they was there, the days was accomplished that she should first be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there was in the same country, shepherd abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And Lord, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. I'm stopping and going through. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth goodwill towards men. And we go to the 20th verse. And the shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they have heard and seen. And it was told unto them. Yeah. That's the end of God's word. May God have a blessing to hear the reading of the word. The message I want to give you today, the glory of Christmas. Yeah. The glory of Christmas. Is Christmas a holiday or a holy day? How essential is your Christmas joy? Is a Christmas story. A mother went Christmas shopping with her young child. Feeling the drag on her arm, she saw the child was stopping to look at a manger scene in the store window. Impatiently, she snatched him away saying, Will you come along? We don't have time for that. The Bible takes us to that, which is the basic truth. Our Christmas with a variety of passages and demonstrate the deep longing of ages for the Savior who will come. Yeah. The historic event of Christ's coming, the meaning of Christmas is God's plan for man. The personal understanding of Christian through the experience of a transformed life. Yeah. Christmas is meant to be a joyful time. Behold, I bring you good time of great joy, yeah. which should be to all people. But the meaning of joy about the Savior is not a joy without the Savior. Yeah. The Bible gives us reason for the Christmas joy. The reason, Reverend Randy, that our Savior is born. Bishop Andrew proclaimed in the court of King James that first reason for mirth is Jesus' birth. Yeah. This belief in the Holy Birth fills the hearts with joy. It is a merry Christian only to those who know the meaning of the manger. Yeah. Without the babe in Bethlehem, the holiday become a holiday, as the carol expressed it. Remember Christ, our Savior, was born on Christmas Day. Yeah. 
We are distracted by many things in the busy rush of the Christmas season. To remember this one thing needful, that you was born this day in the city of David, our Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The people who walks in darkness have seen a great light. Mm -hmm. And they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them has the light shining. Yeah. How our heart leap with joy as we read these words in Isaiah 9 and 2. In rough and fear filled world, suddenly there's hope. Yeah. The plight of man is met by the power of God. The word of hope was given to Ahaz, a feeble king who lived in a world of fear. Yeah. Isaiah gave this prophecy in times of darkness, and it was a prophecy of light. Ahaz looked around for help. Isaiah looked up. Ahaz invited the Assyrian to help him with the disaster consequences. Mm -hmm. Isaiah looked up and found confidence in what he saw as he refused to be affected by the difficult. Yeah. He was not afraid of the presence of life terror. When the outlook was bad, he trusted the outlook. He trusted in God. He knew that a light was come from eternity as man hoped in this world of time. For us, a child is born. Amen. To us, a son is given. Yes. And the government will be on his shoulder. Yes. And there shall be no one who come. No God's light in man's dark and a child birth will bring sure hope to men. Yes. The prince of the forename will be wonderful counsel. Yes. Mighty God. The everlasting Father, yeah. the Prince of Peace, yeah. as counsel he brings the light of God, eternal truth, and to trouble the affairs of men. As mighty God, he comes from eternity to a time with power to dispel the darkness that deal with the plight of men. Yeah. As everlasting Father, he comes with divine compassion, compassion, eager to save to the utmost, yeah. rescuing men from their desperate predicament and give a new hope for time and eternity. Oh, yeah. As Prince of Peace, he bring a kind of peace that not an easy truth that marks a temporary concession or conflict, yeah. but the peace that comes from God eternity, yeah. based on a new spirit of truth yeah. and a right and good will with God. Yeah. On his shoulder will rest the government and a crease of his government and the peace there shall be no end. I say today the choice is ours, choice is ours. to trust God's promise or stumble. Yeah. Like Ahaz, from disaster to disaster, from a lack of faith and heart and courage, yeah. Isaiah lifted a banner of hope for man. God would make clear his love and provision in the birth of his son, and we can trust his word. Yeah. Through Luke 2, 1 through 20, tell the story of a Christmas as a historic event, God promised to fulfill, in fact, a child is born, a son is given, as ideal prophesied. To a world in darkness, God gave his son to be light of the world. For there was no Christmas then until Christ was born. There was an iron light filled with fear and dread. It was a word of Herod the Great, a hard ruler, a treacherous and cruel one who murdered friends and family and attempt to murder, murder the Christ child and his master of the innocent. He killed many boys, yet there was hope for such a world. Yeah. God gave Christmas. He is a good time and a great joy for all the people. Yeah. Ours is God visit planet Earth. Emmanuel tells the story that God is with us. He really is. The Word was made flesh and the world among us. God has done so much. How can we believe so feebly? Our Savior has come. He has taken the rainbow of hope and fastened it forever to the earth. Licking earth to heaven, he is our stairway to the star. He is our true hope, shining and splendid forever. In the presence of that hope, we are freed from our failures and our fears. Yeah. 
Logan has become belonging. God answered to man, need was given to the world on that first Christmas. Yes. The age of longing have become the ages of belonging. Love came down at Christmas. Mm -hmm. yes. And we rejoice in the Savior who claimed us for his own. Uh -huh. To belong to him is to find our true life. Yeah, yeah. We will know whose we are, who we are. And we know who we are. And that's the knowledge is our peace. Yes. Only God can give a Christmas. Yes. And only we in turn to God, we can really have Christmas yes, really have. today. Will Christmas Day recur in your life and my life? God has done his deed. He has visited the earth. He has given us Christmas. He has given us a Savior Day. Now the question is, what would our response be? Yes. Good tidings are here. Yes, they are. Will you believe them? A redeemer is at hand. Yes. Would you trust him? A light is shining in darkness. Will you look towards it? Yes. The shepherd made their response. And then it's an inspiration to all of us. The response, Brother Gilbert, was let's go. Let us go over to Bethlehem and see the thing that have happened. Yes. Which the Lord has made known to us. The shepherd has been afraid. But they trusted in the angel's word. Yes, sir. Be, not Be not afraid. I bring you good news. Yes. They venture in faith, believing that God has made known to them because they followed the leading that God gave. Yes. They found Christ the Savior. Uh -huh. The men of faith are great achievers, Dave. Yes. If we venture in faith, we can find God's wonderful blessing. All right. God is eager for us to have. Yes. If we act upon our faith, and trust in his word, every gloom will become glory. Yes, we are not meant to be afraid. Good tidings, Brother Gilbert, is at hand. Yes. Arise and go to Bethlehem. Find the manger. Mm -hmm. Experience the love that the heart of a Christmas. Yes. Salvation is here. Yes, it, is. it is too good to be true. Preach, Christmas is the season when God called all of us yes. to cast our fears where the world is coming to and rejoice what has come into the world. Without Christ, life is shattered by fear. With Christ, lighted by the wonderful are his love. Paul writes to the Galatians about the coming of Christ. But when the time was fully come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman under the law to redeem them that was under the law. And he gave us a sufficient statement. The meaning of Christmas for Christian theology. Jesus was God incarnate. Is Christ born of a woman? Yes. Come to give a glorious living to a God's gift of salvation. Yes. God the Heavenly Father has sent the spirit of his son into the heart of the faithful to reveal the glad tidings. They all welcome and love into God's family. No longer slave under the law, but sons in the household of God. Yes. If son, then hear. Yes. A world of blessing is at hand. It is ours that we cry, Abba, Father. And someone said, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. Yes. No other help I know. Right. If thou wilt go thyself from me, yes. whither shall I go? The letter to Titus. Paul looked at Christmas to the experience of a transformed life. Yes. Whereas former days was filled with wrong, for we ourselves were once foolish. We were disobedient. Yes. We were led astray, slave to various passion and pleasure. Yes. Passing our days in malice and envy, hatred by men and hating one another. Yes. Now that we have experienced the glory of a transformed life, we rejoice in the coming of Christ Jesus. But when the goodness and love and his kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, Brother Gibbon. Amen. So let us look back on the first Christmas when the grace of God has appeared for salvation of all men. In our experience, God has given us new life, deepened our understanding of Christmas, and we rejoice in what God has done. And when Paul had difficult days in Macedonia, 
afflicted on every turn, fighting within, fear within. God gave comfort by the coming of Titus. The good tidings of great joy has brought glory to the life of Titus. Yes. And he was able to bring comfort and encouragement even to that Christian warrior, St. Paul. Later when Paul wrote to Titus, giving guidance for Christian work at Crete, he was moved to write some of his finest words of interpretation of the work of God in Christ Jesus. Martin Luther said in his letter, it contained all the needful for Christian knowledge and life. Mm -hmm. Paul's word speaks home in our spirit because he experienced a renewal of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When he poured out upon us the riches through Jesus Christ our Savior, that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. Yeah. This is a glory of Christmas. Gifts of new life through the coming of a Savior, born of babe in Bethlehem, a joy of good tidings is ours to share. Yeah. The shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all they have seen and heard, and so shall we. For good news is for all people. Yeah. Jesus is the main attraction. Yeah. When you put it all together, all the Christmas event, the shepherd's story, the journey of the wise men, yeah. the man you've seen, Herod failure to destroy the baby Jesus, it all adds up. God is sending the worldly message. Yeah. God is saying, I'm still in charge. Yeah. 400 years silent since Malachi. Yeah. God was pretty quiet then. But now he speaks loud and clear. Yeah. And sending his son into the world. God's made the biggest move since creation. Yeah. We must never forget who's in charge of this world. Yeah. In the appearance of the shepherd, God sent a message that he cares for the holy, the lowly, and the humble. Yeah. Appearing to the wise rich man, he was saying, bring your wisdom and riches to Christ. Yeah. And here his message was, you can't stop God. God sent a message to all of us. Yeah, he tells us that he loved us so much that he gave his son to yeah. us. He tells us, don't be discouraged. Right. Your redeemer is here. Yeah. From the beginning to end, the birth of Jesus has special identification marks of God yeah. who does things his own way. Yeah. If you understand how God's work, you will see his fingerprints all over the birth event of Jesus. Yeah. His fingerprints on the choice of Jesus' parents. They were poor and humble. God shows his concern for the poor. His fingerprints on the virgin birth. Yeah. Here he shows himself as God who works miracles. He's the same God who works miracles in your life. Yeah. He's the same God who works miracles in my life. And I tell you today, Brother Gilbert, he's able today. Yes, he is. He's long for man's salvation. There are many characters in this drama. Many great men and women played their part, but there was only one main attraction, right. and that was Jesus. Yeah. Moses was a great liberator. He brought Israel out of Egypt, but he was not the main attraction. Yeah. Joshua led people over the Jordan into the promised land, but he was not the main attraction. Yeah. The mighty prophet thundered judgment and righteousness in God's name but they was not the main attraction. Yeah, exactly. We need to keep in mind at Christmas time, yeah. Santa Claus is all right, yeah. but he's not the main attraction. Yeah. Christmas trees and Christmas light is not the main attraction. No, right. The main attraction is Jesus, yeah. the babe in Bethlehem, the savior of the world. Yeah. The coming of Jesus was a happy event. Yeah. It was good news that lifted the spirit all who know this. Yeah. It is still good news today. Yeah. Prophet was speaking of the coming Messiah, which had peaks of joy. Elizabeth baby leaped for joy in her womb when Mary, pregnant with Jesus, came to visit her. Yeah. When she learned of her pregnancy, she sang a joyful song. The wise men started celebrating before they even got to Bethlehem stable. Yeah. Why is Christmas the happiest of all the holidays? People was 
happened because Jesus filled a void. The world needs a spiritual James, and they got one in Christ Jesus. In today's world, Jesus is that spiritual James among us. Jesus coming and makes us happy because we know he's good and true. And we ought to be happy today because he's bringing the love of God to us. Jesus bringing the promise of eternal life. Yeah. It's Christmas time again, y'all. Let us put the real meaning of incarnation into it. Let us make it our daily observation as we receive God's gifts and commit ourselves to him. Christmas being shared. Sharing the man involvement with others. Involvement, Brother Gibbons, brings suffering. Yeah. Suffering with Christ brings glory, yeah. our surpassing peace now and eternal present hereafter. Christmas is mission and in response to the world quest. Sir, we would see Jesus. Someone said he's a rose of cherry. Someone said he's a bright and morning star. Yeah. That never dim. Someone said he's a sure foundation that never sinks. Someone said he's a friend who's seeking the strangers to comfort. Someone said he's a truth that never lies. He's a savior that never refused anyone. He's heaven's solution for earthly problems. Someone said he's Lord of Lords. He's King of Kings. Someone said he's Lily of the Valley. He exhausted. Someone said he's Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. He's the beginning and the end. Someone said he's a heart fixer. Yeah. He's a mind regulator. That's it. He's a doctor in a sick room. That's it. And someone said he's a way maker. Yeah. And I can tell you today, he's my all in all. Yeah, yeah. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him uh -huh. and given him a name above every name. That in the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow. Are right. things in heaven and things in the earth. And things under earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Someone should say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the hallelujah name. To his name. Praise, the Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I thank God for allowing me to be here today. Thank God for showing me the true meaning of what Christmas is all about. Yeah. It's not about toys. It's not about him. It's about his love. It's about his dying. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son yeah. that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you want life eternally? Yes, sir. God sent his son into the world that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to condemn, but he brought love, peace, yeah. Yeah. and understanding. And that's what we need to do to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Yeah. That's our message Amen. for you today. Amen. Amen.
spirited song of holiday cheer. But we want to extend to you, those of you that are listening to my voice right now, an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Jesus is the reason for the season. As the preacher proclaimed, Jesus came all the way from heaven down to save the rest like me. And you're no different. He came to save you as well. Yeah. You know, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Rich, young, rich brewer, uh, man of high esteem. He came to Jesus by night. Yeah. He asked the question, good master, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Yeah. But Nicodemus replied, how, 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 how can I enter back into my mother's womb. In other words, how can I go back to Kaiser or Summer or Alta Basin and go through that whole birthing process? No, 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 Jesus was not talking about that. He was talking about you, Nicodemus, looking with his spiritual eyes, and that's what I'm asking you to do this afternoon. With your spiritual eyes, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Reach way down deep within, and you know that the story is true. Greatest story that was ever told. How Jesus, born of a virgin, wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger, died for the sins of the world. You can accept Jesus Christ right now, right in your home, right in your living room, right in your bedroom, right in your car. If you would just say, Lord, here am I, a wretch undone, willing to surrender my life to you. Won't you take me as I am? Won't you restore and renew and give back to me that which was given to me from birth? A right relationship with you? Accept Jesus Christ right now. If you would just write in the comment box, I want Jesus Christ to come into my life. I surrender to the will of the Father. In Jesus' name, and he'll step right in. And then get with some baptized believer. Get with some church. And begin to serve God. I know, I know the sanctuary is empty now, but we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Those that have gone on before us. Those that have left us this great story of the one who died for the sins of mankind. God bless you, and I pray that you have been blessed by the word. We thank uh, those of you that have tuned in. God will keep you. And oh, before I, before I take my seat and turn it back over to the minister, David, uh, Associate Minister David Moore, um, I was just sitting there thinking that um, our founding pastor, Pastor J.L. Richard, and, and our, our, our late pastor who has gone on home to be with the Lord, Dr. Frank Pink, Bishop Frank Pickett Jr., would probably just uh, talk in communication with each other, talking to each other, saying, you know, Pinky, I thought you taught them boys better than that. Pinky was probably up there saying, yeah, if the Lord let me go back down, I'll pop all of them upside the head. But <laughs> well, the one thing that they taught us as young ministers is that it's giving time. And we should never forget. See, the church don't operate on just our prayers alone. But we have to be able to continue to give. And this is the giving season. And I'm not, my wife would tell you, I'm not a joker, but I just thought that that would awaken us to the fact that we have to continue to support the church with our tithes and with our offerings. And I, as one that, you know, even in this pandemic season, and I'm the store owner, my income comes from my store. And right now they're shutting us down. I don't have income, but I still tithe. I still give God what he means, the 10%. And those of you that are listening to my voice while he's pricking your heart right now, go to give a five and give your gift. Your donation to the Evergreen Baptist Church. 
because we'll be much obliged and appreciate you. God bless you and God keep you. I'm going to ask the Deaf Reverend Moore to come back right now. Amen. Amen. We are so appreciative and thankful for our own Dr. Robin Amen. bringing us such a word today in this season. We want to offer our appreciation to you, Evergreen Church family, and all of you who are commenting on the broadcast and encouraging us and praying for us. We could not do this without your prayers. We simply don't have it within ourselves to do this by ourselves. And so we are thankful, we are so thankful that you are with us and that you're encouraging us. We thank you for your prayers for Reverend Robbins today. We want to thank, really, really give thanks to uh, our own musician, yes. Brother Donald, who sings beautifully of the Christmas, Christmas time. We also want to thank the head of our trustees, Deacon Woodfall, and our treasurer, Sister Emma, for continuing to work diligently. We want to give a special thanks to our own Dr. Robbins, yes. who takes it upon himself every year yes to prepare and give out Christmas baskets to those who are in need. He is faithful, he is consistent, he is committed to Evergreen Baptist Church. And it shows that he is committed first and foremost to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. We want to bring Reverend Robbins back to give us our benediction. I am Reverend David Moore. My director is reminding me that I should tell you that and I kind of forget. But right now, come on, Reverend Robbins, take us on home. Praise God from whom all blessing flows. In the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of what we're going through, there's a lot of lost joy. In the midst of the bereavement, in the midst of jobless, in the midst of those who are homeless, don't let no one steal your joy. Because this joy I have, yeah. the world didn't give it. No, it didn't. I sure believe the world can't take it away. Yes, yes. God, our Father, we thank you now for your word that you have blessed us with. Yes. And we pray that all who receive your word on today yes. will be a blessing to them and who they share it with. Remember, Evergreen Lord, we're going through the trials of life. Sometimes we don't know how to walk, but we're walking by faith and not by sight. So we actually continue to lead and guide all the members that make up this church. Remember the community from where we come. Remember those who are in charge of those who are sick, Lord, those who are dispensing the drugs to help us stay alive. Remember yeah. all those, Lord. Yeah. Please, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless our homes. Yeah. We know that many homes don't have peace. We ask you to make the home homes of love. Many homes don't have love. And Lord, we ask you to bring blessing, our joy into the home. Because Many homes have no joy because many have no home. So Lord, we ask you to bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Like you blessed once, Lord, you can do it again. Yes. Now, Lord, now unto him who's able to keep you from falling. Yes. And present you fall before his presence with exceedingly great joy. Yes. To the all wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, and power. Now and forever, and all God's people together said, Amen. 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 And praise God from whom all blessings continue to flow.
Peace I've been searching for The Lord He brought the love 